Joel Green of Curiosity Quest has met with many of you on this very important issue. In 1996, I had initiated the Antelope Valley Anti-Dumping Task Force. Working with our city councils, our town councils, and our volunteers, we were able to put together a very strong initiative to prevent the illegal dumping and to help clean up the illegal dumping that was occurring in our valley. We've had educational programs, uh, hazardous waste cleanup roundup programs, and together this type of partnership has been very effective. We want to continue and have an aggressive partnership so that we can keep our valley clean and stop this illegal dumping. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letters came to us, one of them from Los Angeles, California. Zion wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, why is littering bad? I know it doesn't keep the earth clean, but what are the reasons? And our second letter came to us from Ohio. Jonathan wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious about illegal dumping. Is it like littering? And what can we do to stop it? Well, because of you guys, we are up here in Antelope Valley, California, where we're gonna scour the desert, exploring your questions, and get to the bottom of this. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. All right, so we're we are in a car, a police car, or sheriff's car, I should say, and I'm here with Deputy Farrell. Deputy Farrell, thank you so much for having me on for a ride along. Good to meet you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I'm not used to meeting people on these circumstances, <laughs> although I'm in the front seat, which is good. This is good. So here in the Antelope Valley, I understand that uh, there's been an illegal dumping issue that's been going on that you guys are really trying to address. Uh, there has been, and there is. And to combat that, uh, Different groups in the valley, different government agencies, different government entities have come up with a, a legal dumping task force, and I'm part of that task force. And my job on the task force is to go out and identify and arrest persons that illegally dump trash and waste in the desert. Well, now, let's talk about this. Our letter from uh, Zion was about, like, littering, and we're, we're taking it, we're stepping out there, right? It's past littering. It's taking large quantities of tires, trash, yard waste, uh, cut up vehicles, all kinds of things, and dumping those items out in the desert. And once they're dumped, they never go away. They just sit there for years and years and years, and it creates a situation where it provokes or prompts other people to dump in the desert also. What does it mean to dump or litter? Like if you, let's just say if you peel a banana and you just throw it um, not in the trash, you are littering. Like dumping trash on the floor, like, and like pol maybe polluting the air with like dirty things. Well, you litter and someone has to pay for it just for you. It means that um, people are dropping stuff where they shouldn't be. That means you're polluting the planet. Well, when you dump something, but you're not supposed to. Um, like people when they throw stuff and they don't pick it up and they throw stuff in the wrong place. How do you separate littering from illegal dumping? I mean, they're both crimes, right? They're both crimes. Simply discarding an item out of your window of your car while you're driving down the street, well, that's simple littering. Okay. That's illegal, and you would get a citation for it. But illegal dumping is different where you load up your vehicle with trash and debris and items that would normally go into a trash dumpster or to the uh, landfill, yeah. and you simply drive it out to an open area take it out of your vehicle, leave it on the ground, and drive away. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The Los Angeles County Department alone picks up seven million pounds of trash per year in the Antelope Valley. All right, so we've made our way out to Little Rock Creek here in Antelope Valley, and I'm here with Chris. Chris, we're gonna talk about the environmental impact that uh, littering or illegal dumping actually has, and we have a lot to discuss here behind us. Yeah, we do. First of all, tell us what you do. 
Well, I work for LA County Department of Public Health. You know, it's funny, our letter that got us out of here was from Zion, and she wants, you know, she talking about litter and about how it's, she knows it's bad for the earth, but why? Now, with the health impacts, you've got the, the, the disease aspect. The second thing is, you're not 100% sure what's in here. It, it appears to be mostly inert material, uh, rocks, uh, roofing material, but we've had sites where the material, um, it kind of leaches with the soil. There's a chemical reaction that takes place that metals usually can deposit into the soil. Uh, a lot of the drinking water for the Antelope Valley is taken right from Little Rock Creek, from groundwater. This per eventually percolates into the ground. Most of the water here is well fed. As a, a green program, I feel like man, we should have like some, some workers at it. We should have some trucks. We should have some gloves. We should be down there and take care of this well, stuff. And come back in a, in a couple of months, and <laughs> we're going to have people from fire department, we're gonna have our contractor here, we're gonna, it's gonna be in excavators. Uh, we're not sure how the, the, it's actually gonna take place, but there's gonna be some heavy equipment. It's gonna be a big project to get this one yes. uh, solved. This is an area where someone brought a bunch of debris and what this is, this is the rest of the motorhome that we saw down the road. In fact, this piece right here, oh yeah, you'll recognize, <laughs> is the front end of a, of a well, essentially it's a Class A motorhome. This is a full-size motorhome. Unbelievable. Here's the front end. See where the headlights went? This is where the windshield was. Because someone wanted to recycle the metal, and then they just discarded the remaining pieces out here in the desert, and they put this all in this big pile here. Why? I, I guess I'm missing the, the uh, I'm missing something here. Why cut this up? Take all that time and energy to cut it up when this can be disposed of without breaking the law. They get money for the recycling, and that part I understand. Yeah. But what I can never understand is why dump the debris in the desert? Why not just dump lawfully? Take it to a landfill dispose of it properly. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The Mojave Desert tortoise is a threatened species that can live up to 100 years old. As we made our way over to another location here in Antelope Valley, I'm here with Kirsten. Kirsten, Hi. first of all, what is your job? I am a senior planner with the Department of Regional Planning, and I'm currently working for the zoning enforcement section. So what we do is regulate land use on private property. This whole topic of littering or, or illegal dumping, mm -hmm. it's not just outward. It actually has to do with people's residence as well, right? It's not just uh, random people um, dumping junk on any property. It's also property owners that decide to keep a large amounts of trash, junk, debris, uh, inoperable vehicle and similar items on their property. How do you determine if you have too much stuff out in front of your property? The, the best way is to call us, um, but uh, we do go by the zoning code. Every parcel has a different zone. For example, if you can, um, if you live in a single family residence, um, you of course can have your swing set in the back for your children, you can have your lawn chairs out, but once you start um, piling your trash in the back versus having it picked up, uh, that is a problem. All right, so I keep hearing all about this, these, uh, these crimes, the law and everything. I think it's time that we actually speak to an attorney, right? Right. We speak to an attorney. We have an attorney around here? Is we, we do, don't we? We do. All right, let's go meet him. What can happen to somebody if they're caught dumping illegally? Um, they have to pay a fee. They would have to pay a fine, like, like money. They can get a ticket or pay a fine. Um, they can go in jail. Um, what they get is like a fine to pay or sometimes um, prison. They can get a ticket and they can pay for the ticket what they did to our earth and the cop will be very disappointed in them. We are out of the field and into an office and I'm here with District Attorney Dave Campbell. Dave, good to see you. Joel, good to meet you. All right, so the first question I have for you is, Dave, why would people illegally dump? Well, Joel, it's the oldest motive in the world, greed, money, because they can, because it's easy. It's easier than following the rules and spending the money to do it right. What happens to people if they're caught illegally dumping? Well, unlike prosecuting cases like burglary and robbery, the goal of prosecuting people is not to put them in jail, is not to punish them, it's compliance. The idea is make it hard. 
make it difficult for people to make the decision to dump in the desert. Know that they're facing possible fines and possible jail time by being brought into court and prosecuted unless they get rid of the dumping. If I witness something like this happening, um, is there something that I can do to help the situation out? Well, one of the things that the Antelope Valley Dumping Task Force has done is they've gotten a series of cameras, and what they can do is they put them at different areas, and it automatically takes pictures, and that helps law enforcement. Wow. One of the key things about being able to prosecute these cases is the willingness to come forward and say, officer, I saw this. I saw the license plate. I saw the guy's or gal's uh, face. And what happens is more times than not, and I know in talking to Rob about this, he may have mentioned this, you get that information, and because you know you have a witness willing to go to court, you knock on the door and you say, here's what happened yesterday, what do you want to do about it? And we can back it up with witnesses willing to come to court. That's what we need. You know, I, I would just think that with, with the thought of going to court, going to jail, being fined, cameras out there, people are going to talk about it. That's a lot of reasons to not dump stuff. Kind of like a red light ticket. When you realize that there may be major repercussions for doing that, that you're being watched, that people care, the community gets together and they care, and you realize that you gotta do something different. You gotta go the harder route, but the right route. Well, District Attorney Dave Campbell, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right, let's keep moving. Correct me if I'm wrong, De Deputy Farrell, but you guys are having to spend your effort, the taxpayers' money, I mean, on the efforts of stopping this and in, in bringing people to justice that are actually doing this. Am I wrong in that? Absolutely. We have to go out and prosecute the criminals. We have to locate and identify them. Uh, County Public Works has to come out, and if there's any debris on the road right-of-way, they have to clean that up. If there are uh, any types of uh, hazardous materials, those have to be picked up. The property owners have to come and clean up their, their land. So it's quite a drain on uh, government resources and uh, personal resources. Yeah, I mean, what, what's this right here? You could take that television set to a hazardous waste roundup for free, drop it off, it will be recycled for absolutely no cost. Otherwise, we're talking about a crime. You just committed a crime. And instead, this. you committed a crime by coming out to the desert and dumping it. They would have come to your house, picked it up, they could have, you could have taken it somewhere to an e-waste roundup and dropped it off. There's methods in place to have those types of items uh, recycled. What can you do to help prevent dumping? Um, throw your trash away and don't just litter. What I can help is like remind people that um, this is our planet and like they shouldn't do this because we might not have like a lot, a lot of time here. You should go in the trash can with the um, trash can car, gets it and puts it somewhere. Pick up the trash so, so the air could be cleaner. We are above the Antelope Valley and I'm here with Julianne. Julianne, first of all, tell us what do you do here in the valley? I, I get together with organizations within the valley to host illegal dumping cleanups. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, I've noticed a problem spot, I work with them to figure out ways to clean it up and get to the root of the problem. One of the letters that got us out here was from Jonathan, and he wanted to know what illegal dumping was. I don't think we've defined it yet. Can you define what illegal dumping is? Yeah, of course. Illegal dumping is the unauthorized disposal of any kind of waste on both public and private property. Here in Antelope Valley, we're learning that this is a problem. I mean, how big of a problem is it really? It's a huge problem. As I said, it, um, it happens when people dispose of waste on both public and private property. And you think maybe that it's just um, someone going out there and dumping in these vast desert areas, but a lot of the times those areas are owned by people. And it poses a huge health threat to the, uh, to the environment here and to the public here, especially children, because it can pollute the groundwater and it can create a breeding ground for rodents and bacteria. You organize groups that go out and do this. What does that look like? Well, uh, most of the time it's a, just a local church or community group or even a scout group that comes to me and says, you know, we've noticed this one spot and we want to we want to do something to help. We'll send out whatever kind of disposal they need and the group goes out there and they're really doing all of the work. I'm just cheering them on. <laughs> How do people reach out to actually put together one of these groups with you or, or using your help? Well, they can contact me at my job. I work at Waste Management mm -hmm. or they can contact any of the other um, disposal companies out here. It's really unlimited, you know, just get in touch with anyone. If you want to contact the county or contact the city, they'll get you in touch with the right person to go ahead and host the cleanup. 
You didn't set this up, did you? Because I don't know if you see what's going on, but people are actually cleaning up down the hill right below us. I did not did you set, set that, that up. up. No, no. <laughs> Seriously. So it wasn't set up, but that's pretty ironic. Well, as, I, as we pointed out, if you looked at, just down the hill, you could see a tire and plenty of litter. And obviously, these, these citizens have noticed that it is a problem. They've gone into action. Hopefully, someone hears about their action, and they go into action as well. Help be part of the solution, exactly, not the problem, right? Exactly. All right, well, Julianne, thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Cool. All right, let's move on. Many years ago, local Antelope Valley residents formed a task force to combat illegal dumping. This task force has tried to find ways to prevent illegal dumping through educating children in local schools, utilizing surveillance cameras, and providing people with disposable and recycling information. One local task force member, Doug Parham, explains his concerns. Doug, we are standing in the middle of the desert with trash around us. Tell us a little bit about the task force that you belong to. Uh, they've been very helpful as far as uh, making it possible for me to come out and pick up this trash. Uh, they gave us a, a big 40-foot dumpster, which is just a mile or so over that way. And uh, wow. so I come out here on the weekends with my little trailer, and I just pick up trash and take it over to the dumpster. Uh, they already helped. I picked up 400 tires, and they came with a couple of big dumpsters and took those away. Are you a paid employee to no, do this? No, 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 no. I'm not a paid employee. I come out here on my own and, and pick this up to hopefully making a difference. How did you get involved in this? Because I know there are other people that are watching this. Their hearts are breaking, like ours is when we see a lot of this stuff. How did you get involved, and can other people get involved as well? I called the uh, supervisor's office, and uh, Christine Borzaga picked up the phone, and she's part of the, uh, she suggested that I attend a meeting mm -hmm. of the uh, task force, which I did. And uh, from then, I just started going uh, once a month, mm -hmm. a couple hours. And uh, it's uh, really a, a good place to for all the people that are involved in all the different aspects of trash reclamation to get together and uh, network. You, you know, Doug, I gotta tell you, if, uh, on a personal note, it, it, people challenge me all the time, like, hey, do people really care about the environment? Are there really people out there? And we're meeting you, you, you're just a part of a task force, you're a resident, right. and you just care, and you're taking yeah. your own time, a couple hours a week, a right. couple hours, uh, days yeah. uh, out yeah. of the week, yeah. you and your wife, on yeah. your own time, you're trying so, to figure out how to solve a problem all on your own, and man, I really, really appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thank thank you. you. Just get that, that, that to rub off a little bit more out there, and, and man, hey, this desert's <laughs> gonna be clean in no time. Oh, hopefully. Thank you for helping us. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. Over half of Antelope Valley's water supply comes from groundwater. At home, it all starts with us. We are the ones that can prevent litter. We are the ones that can prevent illegal dumping. We have the power! How? How do we have the power? Okay, well, first you gotta know what the three R's are. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, red? Uh, no. No? Okay, no. you guys know the three R's, all right? By now, we all should know what the three R's are. Absolutely. Reduce, Reduce reuse, reuse, recycle. recycle. We did not practice that. No, that we did. Perfect. That was awesome. That was all great. Right. Okay. Let's get into it now. So tell me, mm -hmm. depending on your area, the, the carts are different colors. Correct. Out here, green is recycling. So you're gonna tell me yes or no? Uh, I'm gonna say green cardboard. It is, it could be in the green waste. Yeah. Could be in the green waste, but probably more in the uh, recycle more bin. More in the recycle bin. This mm -hmm. color out here is recycling. So that's gonna go in there. Okay. How about your tin cans? Tin cans, recycled. Yeah, absolutely. What about your glass? Gla glass, we know that's recycled. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw that in there. How about I just leave that right there? <laughs> there you go. How about some paper? Paper, well, it used to be the trash, but now it's recycled. Right. Yeah. So, absolutely. So what about the famous paper plastic bags? This is a tough one. I mean, there's places I can take it and there's places that don't. Should be in the trash can, should be in the recycle bin. You tell me, out here, what should we Out do? here, we're gonna recycle it. It's I absolutely it. recyclable. You can look at the bottom, has a chasing arrow, absolutely goes in the recycling bin. I love bin. it. Okay, now, plastic bottles. Yes. We use about 1,500 per second. I'm, I'm sorry, 1,500 per 1,500 1, bottles second. per second. So as we're having this conversation, thousands and thousands of bottles. Just Absolutely. Used. Over 80% of these plastic bottles will end up in a landfill. So that's why it's really, really important for all of us to just take the pledge and recycle. Okay? 80%. Aluminum cans. Yes. Yes or no? Oh, recycle. Oh, absolutely. Easy. So I don't have some right here, but what about our batteries? You know, we've got cell phones, we've got TVs, we've got electronics. Yeah, well, I know, and, and again, at different areas it's different. We should not be putting our batteries in our recycle bin or our trash correct. bin. They should be going to a... Collection center. Collection center. And where are these collection centers here at Antelope Valley? We're standing right here. 
a one-stop right shop, it. people. I know. If people want to know what should I be putting in my recycle bin, what should I be putting in my trash bin, what should I be putting in my green waste bin, what should I not be putting in here, bring it to a collection center, is there a place where people can go that live out here in Antelope Valley to find out the answers? Absolutely. I believe some of our lids... Look, there we go. ...have the, the information right here. Okay. We have a website. Um, periodically, we'll send out information in our billings. Um, and so anybody can go on site. Now, what if you're not sure if mm -hmm. it's recyclable or not? Trash or recycling? If, well, at where I'm at and what I've learned, recycling. Absolutely. Always. Because it can be separated out. It has a second chance of life. Absolutely. If the recycling person or the recycling facility doesn't want it, they're going to take it out anyways. Lisa, I appreciate your help. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are out here at the resolution part of today's discovery, and I'm here with the city manager and the mayor of Palmdale. Let me start with you, Mayor Jim. Tell us, obviously you know about this problem. Mm -hmm. It is a problem, illegal dumping. Right. But we have resolution here. Tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. Well, resolution comes in a lot of different forms. What you're seeing today is a massive cleanup. Lots of uh, different parties coming together to, to clean up. And it's really the partnership, I think, is the key here for our city. How do we combine anti-illegal dumping with uh, awareness from our rank and file resident, or, or just anybody in any neighborhood? How do you get them to pay attention and be part of the solution. That seems to be one of our biggest challenges. How do you continuously keep that message in front of them? Well, the message here for us has always been building value in everything we do. So keeping our desert pristine and clean builds value into our, our life experience and our value in our homes and, and what we have in our city. So uh, that's an easy one to, to make that connection is how do you get people out to these remote areas to go, Wow, where did that come from? In our valley? That? As the city mayor here, you're probably dealing with lots of different issues. What kind of pride do you feel when you actually see something like this actually happening? Again, resolution. Resolution. No, it's awesome. And it just tells me the partnership is working. When you see these, these elements come together and, and transform an area of the desert that was just terrible, and now look, it's back. The beauty of the desert's back. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the partnership and, and who's out here today. We have this uh, California Conservation Corps is helping us, and, and along with some city staff, we brought out uh, trucks, uh, and, and uh, there must be 20, 25 people out here loading the trucks and uh, dumping them in the dumpsters down there. Uh, and you know, the, the thing that happens when, when uh, young people get an opportunity to do this work is they see that they can make a difference in their town. They can make a difference in their community and build community. And, you know, I think people get as much joy out of doing something good and, and making something good happen uh, as just about anything you can do. It's, it, giving back is so important. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you guys' time. One quick thing I want to have, uh, if you wouldn't mind, tell us how can people get involved? How can people not not let it get to this point where we have to be out here and spend a day out here with all these individuals. Well, I think it's all awareness, and we need to be talking to our neighbors about the need to, to preserve the beauty of the desert. And seeing a grandparent and a grandchild working together, I think that's going to be a continuation of mess, a message right there. And, and that's kind of the goal for us, is we want to make this indigenous to our day-to-day, -day, that uh, this is not acceptable, and it's something we won't stand for. And as a community, we're going to step up and fix it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you hear it from the top out here in uh, Palmdale. How does dumping affect you? It hurts the environment and that doesn't make me feel very well because I like the environment. It affects me because all of, on the news I heard that birds are dying because of the soda can. Our environment can and can be um, really dirty because like some people litter in tires and all. This world will be ours next because we're like the next generation. So like it's sort of affecting us because like we're here trying to like help save it and everybody else from the last generation is like dumping on it. It affects me by giving me germs and giving me a lot of stuff that I, I'm not supposed to have in my body. It affects me because then the world will be kind of dirty with trash all over and you, maybe you might not be able to walk somewhere. All right, so I'm here with Bruce with the city of Palmdale. And Bruce, before we start this interview, I'm going to stand up on my... Ah, yeah. look at that, huh? Uh, uh, now, now we're eye to eye. Yeah, <laughs> not quite, but... Uh, anyhow, so Bruce, tell us, what is your role in, in the activities going on here today? Uh, I had staff out here earlier this morning. Uh, we brought a skip loader out to help load up the heavier debris into the dumpsters. And also, as the California Conservation Corps was coming through here, they were pushing out 
pushing the debris out into piles, making it easier for the guy in the loader to pick up to get in the dumpsters. How do you survey the area and say, okay, we're gonna focus here, here, and here? What do you do? What's your process? Well, we, we kind of go by a lot of how many citizens' complaints we've had. Okay. And, and it, with each, each complaint, we go out and visit, uh, phys physically inspect the area. And depending on staffing and scheduling, we kind of hit them uh, on an as-needed basis. The worst ones, you know, if there's anything hazardous out there, uh, oil, anything like that, that becomes an immediate concern and we try to remedy it as soon as possible. Which a lot of them think this is a desert, we'll just dump stuff, it's just a desert. Well, for us, for those of us that's lived here all of our life, um, it's more than a desert. Yeah. Come up here, you know, in the mornings, you see the beautiful sunrise, evenings, get the beautiful sunset. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a little windy, that helps distribute some of the trash around, but this is where we live, have pride in your community. I know after seeing this show that you probably want to be part of the solution, right? Well, it's simple. The simplest thing is to actually pick something up. But if you want to get involved, report a crime in progress, or actually get on a task force, it's simple. You can call 1-888-8-DUMPING or log on to stopilegaldumping.com. I want to thank everyone involved in today's show, and I especially want to thank you, Zion and Jonathan, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about, and it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I wonder, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. People ask me all the time, how do we put together Curiosity Quest? Well, if you want to know how we do that, visit us on YouTube so you can check out some behind the scenes of how we put together Curiosity Quest and become part of the CQ Nation.